let me discuss about Fourier series. That's what is Fourier series? What is the use of Fourier series or applications of Fourier series? And definition of Fourier series. That is what we are going to discuss as a first part in this video. Now, let me start with the introduction of Fourier series. Fourier series is invented by a French mathematician Fourier. He introduced this series in 1822 while he was investigating the problem of heat conduction. He was also a physicist and historian too. The series of sines and cosines is known after him. Next we have a short look over what are the applications of or uses of this series. So this is a series of sines and cosine terms and uh, this series arises in the important practical task of representing the general periodic functions. That is, in short, these are particularly suitable for expansions of periodic functions. It is suitable for the expansion of periodic functions. That is, it is used in, Fourier series is used in signal processing. Signal processing. It is the best application of Fourier analysis because advanced noise cancellation and cell phone network technology uses Fourier series where digital filtering is used to minimize noise and bandwidth demands respectively. And also it is broadly used in telecommunication system for modulation and demodulation of voice signals. Also the input and output and uh, calculation of pulse and the sine and cosine graph. Besides that, it is used in, that is a Fourier analysis or Fourier series is used in image processing, heat distribution mapping, wave simplification, light simplification, random measurement, etc. etc. So, as a whole, I have to say, the Fourier series is particularly suitable for expansion of periodic function. Wherever there is a periodic function, there is a phenomenon of periodic function we have used, we can make use of this series and get the solutions. Now, with this short introduction, let me now move on to periodic motion. As I told you already, this uh, Fourier series is suitable only for periodic functions. So before we move on to what is periodic function in detail with the definition, so let me have a short introduction about what is the meaning of periodic motion. So based on the name itself, you understand periodic. So after that, which means the motion is repeated in equal interval of time. Any particular motion, if it is repeated in equal interval of time, then we say that is a periodic motion. So there are so many types of motions that are available that is linear, curvilinear, rectilinear, etc. So among those we have to take only periodic motion. So periodic motion is a motion that is repeated in equal interval of time. That is a period of time to complete one full cycle. That is period of time to complete one full cycle is nothing but a period. For example, we can say the motion of hands of a clock, am I right? We can say the motion of a hands of a clock, it will take a, so up to 12 hours. So it will, for one rotation, so it has to complete it 12 hours. So, so period of the motion of clock is 12 hours. So next uh, the motion of earth around the sun. So the motion of the earth around the sun is nothing but in, this, in an orbit. This is also in periodic. So, once in 365 days or 366 days it completes its known rotation again it's starting to rotate around the sun in the same orbit isn't it it is also periodic so uh, uh, besides that i have to say periodic motion is performed for example rocking a chair a bouncing ball a swing in motion then 
Alzheimer's as I told you earlier, the earthen in its orbit around the sun and the water wave, these are some of the examples of a periodic motion. So, in each of the above examples that I have mentioned, the interval time for repetition of the motion is called period. That is the interval of time for a repetition of motion is called period. So, that is after a particular time, for example, let me take the hands of clock. So, after 12 hours, it has started rotating the same way. So, 12 hours, then 22 or 4 hours means it comes to the same point and so it repeats that is evening after a particular interval of time. So, the same thing has to happen again and again means that is that the smallest period is a period, that smallest number is a period. Uh, that is what we are going to see in the next what is the meaning of period or primitive period or fundamental period. So, as a whole you should know what is period? So, when the same motion repeats itself after equal interval of time, we call it periodic motion. And the period is the time to complete one full cycle. Okay? So, with this short introduction about what is periodic motion and period, let me now move on to periodic function. This is what we need. Now, so a function, as I told you already, periodic means, so, uh, so, yeah, when the same motion repeats itself after the equal interval of time, we call it as a periodic motion. Am I right? So, a function returning to same value at regular interval. Okay? A function returning to the same value at regular interval means that is a periodic function. And in math term, I have to say this as a periodic function is a function that repeats its value in regular periods or regular interval of time. Okay? So, in a regular interval of time, the same thing has, at a regular interval of time, the same thing, that is after 2 hours, after 5 hours, after 6 hours, something like that means, the same thing has to happen again and again, after a particular period of time, okay. So, if it is so, the type of function, we name it as a periodic function. So, one of the most examples in a periodic function is nothing but a trigonometric function. Trigonometric. This is the very... Well known examples are the trigonometric functions and the trigonometric functions like sine, cosine, tan, cot, secant, cosecant. Okay. So these are the well known examples and the periodic functions uh, because periodic functions are used throughout science to describe oscillations, waves and other phenomena that exhibits periodic. Whenever we have to move on to periodic phenomena means definitely we should take a of any of the periodic function and express them in terms of series and evaluate it. Okay. So now let us move on to this short introduction. Let me now move on to our definition of what is a periodic function. So a function f of x is to be periodic if and only if f of x plus p is equal to f of x. This is true for some value of p and every value of x. Which means that is after a successive period of time, that is after a particular period of time, the same thing has to happen again and again. So as a simple example, I have to take, suppose if you take f of x nothing but rotation of earth, that is a motion of earth, okay, motion of earth, if you take f of x as motion of earth, so it will take 366 days or 365 days, okay. So here, P is nothing but 365. So after 366, here if it starts from at this point, if the earth starts its rotation at this point to circle around the uh, uh, sun, so after 365 days, it comes to the same point. So again, it starts rotating. So around the sun in the same orbit, okay. So here 365 is nothing but in a period, okay. So, this for your understanding purpose, I will give 365. Suppose if you take uh, uh, the motion of hands of clock, if you take the motion of hands of clock, it will take 12 hours. So, after 12 hours, the same thing has to happen again and again. That is at 24 hours, again it reaches 12 o'clock. At 48 hours, again it reaches 12 o'clock. Am I right? But here, 12, 24, 28, here the smallest value is 12. Okay? The smallest 12. That is what we call as a period. Okay, that is the smallest value of p for which this equation is true for every value of x is called period or primitive period, sorry, p or 
एम आई टी आई डी प्रिमेटिव पीरियड और फंडामेंटल पीरियड फंडामेंटल पीरियड सो वॉट एवर दैट मे बी द नेम वी हैव यूज एदर इट मे बी ऑफ पीरियड और प्रिमेटिव पीरियड और फंडामेंटल पीरियड ऑफ द फंक्शन एफ ऑफ इट्स सो सो द स्मॉलेस्ट वैल्यू ऑफ पी so here we had take so as i told you periodic function means the same thing has to happen again and again after a particular interval of time here yes, we have to take the smallest value okay so that value is nothing but the period of primitive period of fundamental period of the given function f of x so as in terms of instead of giving like this a practical examples that's for your understanding suppose if i am going to give a function That is an example of a periodic function in a math term. So I have to give you an example as a sine curve as an example. This is one of the best example. I am going to give you the sine function. That is a periodic function with period. This is a periodic function with period two pi. Because as I told you already, periodic function. That is one of the most important examples of the trigonometric function because which repeat over the interval of two pi radians. That is of three sixty degree. Okay. So the sine function is periodic with period two pi because f of that is instead of f you have sine of x plus two pi as equal to sine x. This is true for all values of x. That is this function repeats on the interval of length. Length of the interval here is two pi. Okay. So I'm just uh, draw a sine curve here. So this is a sine curve. Okay, sine x. So if it is plus one, and here we have minus one. As you know already, it starts at zero because sine zero value is zero. So at here this is pi by two, pi, and three pi by two, and uh, two pi. Likewise to the negative sides too. That is here minus pi by two, and minus pi. Minus three pi by two and minus two pi. So let's first draw it on the positive side. So at zero, sine curve takes the value pi by two means it reaches the value at one. And again at pi it comes to zero and three pi by two means it touches the value minus one. That is at this point. And two pi means it comes to that is it reaches point zero. Again for the negative sides too you have the same one but here at minus pi by two means it reaches. Point minus pi by two and pi means that's the point zero plus one and zero. This is the curve. Sine curve look like this. So how many times it repeats? Is no, don't worry. So but the length of the interval here is only two pi, zero to two pi. The curve looks like this. Okay. So what is the shape of the curve from zero to two pi? If you extend this up to four pi, six pi, okay, etc. The shape of the curve seems to be like this. It go like this, okay? Okay, it go like this. So this is a well-known example of a periodic function. Now, with this short introduction, let me now move on to Dirichlet condition. Because before we move on to the definition of what is Fourier series, let me have short look over the Dirichlet condition. This is one of the important condition for the existence of Fourier series. Okay, so any function f of x can be developed as a Fourier series. Generally, a Fourier series can be represented like this: that is, f of x is equal to a naught by two plus sigma n is equal to one to infinity a n cos n x plus sigma n equal to one to infinity b n sin n x. This series consists of only cosine and sine terms. I explain why. Because as I told you already, uh, periodic function. As I told you already, I think you remember that. Periodic function. That's the most important example of the trigonometric functions because which repeat over the interval of two pi radians. As I told you already, under the example of periodic function. But trigonometric function doesn't have only sine and cosine function. It has a tan function, cosecant function, cot, secant, etc. But we have only cosine and sine alone in a Fourier series expansion. Why this happen? That you see the answer for this. So why this happen? If you ask a question like why this happen means you get the answer under this Dirichlet condition. Now, so any function f of x can be developed as a Fourier series like this means 
here a not a n and b n here a not are called constants so it satisfies the following three condition the first one is f of x is periodic as i told you already fourier series is uh, consists of only that is uh, only periodic functions okay so fourier series uh, means it has only periodic functions so next is single value so uh, for a given so it doesn't take it of multiple value function single that is for a given input you get only one put something like this okay so you get one single value and finite you have to take the value of the function in terms of finite number of terms so first condition most probably it satisfies so periodic function as i told you already periodic uh, fourier series is uh, only suitable for periodic functions and also it should be single value and also finite okay now let's move on to the second condition it's one of the very important condition so based on this alone we have only these two terms as a fourier expansion so f of x has a finite number of finite discontinuities in any one period and no infinite discontinuity why so what is the reason behind this is f of x has a finite number of finite discontinuities it has a finite number of finite discontinuities and in any one period and doesn't have any infinite discontinuity so how i am going to explain this is as and just show you a table this one the table you have learned in your school days but you have to remember this because why we are evaluating this uh, particular series in terms of fourier series to particular series you should know the value of the function at 0 30 degree 45 degree something like this so theta means sin theta cos theta and tan theta and 0 degree means at sin 0 you have 0 1 0 am i right and for 30 degree you have 1 by 2 root 3 by 2 and 1 by root 3 and 45 degree means 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 1 and at 60 degree you have root 3 by 2 1 by 2 and uh, root 3 and uh, at 90 degree you have 0 here 1 and uh, tan 90 infinity and for 180 degree sin 180 is 0 cosine is minus 1 0 and at 270 degree here you have minus 1 0 infinity and 360 degree means that's nothing but again 0 degree so the length of the rotation of the interval is 2 pi okay so here look at here look at the values of sin and cosine in all angles that is 0 35 45 60 90 180 and 2 sub 2 so 270 doesn't have any infinite distance doesn't have any infinity am i right but whereas look at the value of t theta at 90 and 270 degree it has a value infinity that is the meaning of this one so if you take secant secant is nothing but 1 by cos am i right 1 by cosine is anything by zero infinity suppose if you take cosine 1 270 secant value at 270 is infinity so you can't take secant also like cosecant cosecant is 1 by sin sin value at 0 and sub 0 so 1 by 0 is anything by 0 infinity so cosecant value at 0 is infinity like this cot cot theta is nothing but 1 by tan so tan theta is nothing but at 0 itself you get 0 so except sin and cosine so all the trigonometry having one of the finite discontinuities that means infinity so in your terms in your simple terms i have to say infinity in its any of the angle values that is 90 degree or so sort something like this that's why you have to take only sin and cosine in fourier series expansion so suppose in a two mark question you may expect a question why we can't express or we can't take a cosecant or secant or tan or cot in a fourier series expansion why mean because it has an infinite discontinuity your answer is it has an infinite discontinuity that's why we can't take these terms in a fourier expansion okay so the last one is f of x has at the most a finite number of maxima and minima so if it uh, so if any uh, function satisfies these three conditions then we can express it in terms of a fourier series okay now let's now move on to definition of fourier series so very important thing now let f of x be a periodic function and satisfies ritual condition then f of x can be expressed as an infinite series of this form that is f of x is equal to a0 by 2 plus sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity 
a m cos n x plus sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity b n sin n x. Okay, this is called a Fourier series. Here these constants are called Fourier constants. So using Euler's formula, we can find the values of a naught a n and b n. Okay. Now, so before we move on to the Euler's formula, so as a Fourier series mean definitely it should be periodic and it satisfies a Dirichlet condition. That's why we start with the definition of periodic function and have a look over about a Dirichlet condition. Then we now in the definition now we are going to discuss the definition of what is Fourier series and all about it. Okay. Now we make use of the Euler's formula for the Fourier coefficients like that is to calculate the values of a naught a n and b n. So if a function f of x is defined, I have to take the general interval z to c plus 2 pi c2 that is x takes the value from c2 c plus 2 pi so if a function f of x is defined in c2 c plus 2 pi uh, it can be expanded as an infinite trigonometric series like this f of x is equal to a naught pi 2 plus sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity a n cos n x plus sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity b n sin n x here a naught which is Calculated by make use of the formula 1 by pi integral c to c plus. That is, you have to take the least value in the lower limit of the integral c to c plus 2 pi f of x dx and an is equal to 1 by pi integral c to c plus 2 pi f of x cos and x dx and bn is equal to 1 by pi integral c to c plus 2 pi f of x sin nx dx. So, this is for the general formula to calculate the Fourier coefficients a naught, a n, and b n. So, in most of the applications, the interval over which f of x is to be expanded is either minus pi to pi or 0 to 2 pi. So, in most of the applications, the interval over which f of x is to be expanded is either minus pi to pi or 0 to 2 pi. So, that you have to take c here. So, that c in the Euler formula is usually either it is usually either minus pi or zero it is usually either minus pi or zero suppose if you substitute c is equal to minus pi what happened to there is no change in the inside value of the integral okay so a naught is equal to if you substitute a naught c is equal to minus pi what happened so a naught is equal to one by pi integral c becomes minus pi means minus pi 2 minus pi plus 2 pi means you get only plus pi f of x dx likewise a is equal to there is no change only the value of the that is in the limit of the integral only alone changes from minus pi to b plus pi b and also minus pi to plus pi so suppose if c is equal to 0 what happens if c is equal to 0 means you have the length of the interval 0 to 2 pi so a naught is equal to that is a naught is equal to interval from 0 to 2 pi. So nothing is changing a naught is equal to 1 by pi. Instead of 0 to sorry c to c plus 2 pi you have to take 0 to 2 pi f of x dx. Likewise a n is equal to 1 by pi. C instead of c to c plus 2 pi you have to take 0 to 2 pi. Like that b n is equal to 1 by pi. Instead of c to c plus 2 pi you have to take 0 to 2 pi. Only the Limit value of the integral alone change. Nothing will be changed. Okay. So in most of the applications, the interval over which f of x is to be expanded is either minus pi to pi or 0 to 2 pi. So that's why we have to take these two cases and we have to discuss the problem under these two cases in the next video. Okay. Now let me explain. So is a Fourier series that is in pi form. Okay. That's a, there are two types of categories we are going to discuss. One is in pi form, another one is L form. So that is in a change of intervals, we have to discuss a L form. First, we have to concentrate about pi form. Pi form is nothing but either the internal length is of 0 to 2 pi or minus pi to pi. So these two cases we are going to discuss under pi form. Okay. Now, so in a pi form, so f of x is equal to the same series. There is no change in the series itself. But uh, to calculate the Fourier coefficients, we have a slight deviation. Okay. Uh, so why that is a deviation, I will explain. Okay. So now, so in a pi form, as I told you already, there are two types of intervals of length we have to take. One is of 0 to 2 pi. Another one is of minus pi to plus pi. 
So as I told you already, if you put c is equal to zero, if you put c is equal to zero, definitely you get a naught is equal to one by pi integral zero to two pi f of x dx, and a n is equal to one by pi integral zero to two pi f of x cos n x dx, and b n is equal to one by pi integral 0 to 2 pi f of x sin n x dx. So if it is c is equal to 0, next if c is equal to pi, what happens? That is what we are going to see is equal to minus pi. Then what happens? That is what we are going to see. If c is equal to minus pi means as we see already 1 by pi internal limit changes from minus pi to pi f of x dx. And a n is equal to 1 by pi integral from minus pi to pi f of x cos n x dx and v n is equal to 1 by pi integral from minus pi to pi f of x sin n x dx. So these two are the cases we are going to discuss. So in pi form in 0 to 2 pi so we don't have any more categories apart from this. So whenever the function is defined in the interval 0 to 2 pi so we have to write the general expansion of Fourier series and calculate the values of a naught, a and b and substitute in the series. We get the series, the problem will be over. Okay. Now, in case of minus pi to pi, so we have either two categories. That is, either it may be even function, odd function. That is, in case of even function or odd function. So if it is neither even nor odd, neither even nor odd. If it is a even function and odd function that is under half range series that we are going to discuss under half range series. Okay, so if it is in minus pi to pi means we have three categories if it is even, if it is odd, okay, take these two as different. If it is even, if it is odd, if it is neither even nor odd, then how can we calculate the values of a naught, a and b n? So look at here in all these forms there is no change in the Fourier series, f of x is same. Okay, there is no change, but only the change is how what is the formula to calculate the values of a naught, a n, and b n. Okay, only the change in the Fourier coefficients alone. So, what is the formula we can use to calculate the Fourier coefficients a naught, a n, and b n? Okay, now let me list out all the formulas under each of the interval that we have discussed in detail in this table. So, f of x is the general Fourier series, this is the same for all, there is a two types of interval 0 to 2 pi and minus pi to pi. So, if it is in 0 to 2 pi, we make use of this a0, an and bn. So, by making use of these three formula and calculate the values of the Fourier coefficients and substitute in the expansion, we get the Fourier series. So, if it is in minus pi to pi, so we have three categories, if it is even, or and neither even nor odd. So if it is even, we calculate only a naught and a n. That's enough. No need to calculate the value of b n. So this will, this I am going to explain why when we are going to discuss the concepts under minus pi to pi, why this happened. Okay, I will explain in detail that. So if it is odd means you just calculate only b n value. No need to calculate a naught and a n. You directly take that is zero because the property of symmetry this will happen. So I will explain this in detail when we are going to discuss the problems under the concept under minus pi to pi okay if it is neither even nor odd means the same formula look at the 0 to 2 pi so only the interval limits alone change from minus pi to pi okay if it is neither even nor odd means we make use of these formulas to calculate the values of a naught a n and b n so with this short introduction let me know let me now complete about uh, the introduction part of Fourier series and uh, I will see you in the next uh, video in my examples under Fourier series under 0 to 2 pi. Thanks for watching. See you all again in my next video.